This podcast is sponsored by and recorded at Crossings Pub and Eatery on Hyde Park. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be finding us in the digital universe, and welcome to the very first podcast that we like to call Vickers Crossing. My name is Rob Henderson, and I'm with Kevin George, and we're thrilled that you found us wherever you are. My name's Rob, and I'm the uh, rector and priest at Holy Trinity St. Stephen's Anglican Church in London, Ontario, the big blue church in the corner of Wellington and Southdale in South London, and I'm here with Kevin. Kevin George. Uh, you're at that great church out in South London that has that beautiful look. Uh, sort of a, a, a Rona Blue, I yeah, like to call it. Yeah, we call ourselves the Church R- of Rona. Rona. Rona Blue. It's beautiful. <laughs> I understand there used to be a lovely cedar under that, but anyway. Uh, I'm Kevin George. I'm the rector of St. Aidan's Church uh, in uh, uh, northwest London on uh, Oxford Street, and uh, boy, am I ever glad to, to see this podcast come together because it's fun. Uh, we're, uh, we're excited to be able to have opportunities to talk about where faith and the public square intersect. That's why we call this Crossings. And uh, we're also excited to have an incredible producer, a uh, young man by the name of Ian Stevenson. Hello, Ian. Hello. That's me. That's him. So there he is. Good. So we got Ian, we got Rob, we got Kevin. And uh, now we've got you wherever you may be. And this is kind of a, a wonderful opportunity for us, too, because oftentimes we've sat in a lot of these types of establishments and had these conversations about um, where faith intersects with life in the public square as people of faith and, and people that uh, work for the church and do the work that we do, you know, what that's all about. And, and we've had conversations with other people about that. And to actually um, be able to do this on a podcast and kind of expand it a little bit more and and uh, is something I think that's uh, going to be beneficial and helpful, we hope, anyway. Absolutely. And as you say, this sort of an establishment, we're in a pub. We're in a pub. We're in a pub, yeah. uh, which uh, is called Crossings, uh, so which is appropriate to our name. Uh, Crossings uh, Pub and Eatery um, in uh, northwest London on Hyde Park Road. Uh, and they are, have kindly sponsored um, cross the Vickers Crossing and have given us a space uh, to record in. And as Rob says, I know I've been in here quite a few times having conversations about faith in the public square uh, with all kinds of people. So I think it's pretty cool that we get to, to do this on a, on a broader level and invite all of you who are listening into, uh, into this conversation. And this is a great um, old place here, this building. It's got quite an ambiance, eh, Rob? It does. As soon as I walked into the doors, this is the first time I've ever been into this place. Um, driven past it multiple times and always, you know, said in the back of my mind, I got to get in there to see what that looks like. Yeah. But uh, yeah, grand old house with uh, two floors and a lot of different rooms and a uh, uh, chance for people to, uh, to get together and chat and spend some time together. And as we were talking about before we uh, started to record today, the whole idea of a pub or, or a gathering place like this uh, comes from this idea of being um, in the public square and being in the center of things and having people gathering around together right. to, to be together. And, you know, we we're remembering the old, uh, the old Cheers yeah. um, song from years ago, coming to Sometimes a place where everybody... Sometimes you want to yeah, go where, where everybody, everybody knows, knows your name. <laughs> and, um, boy, do we not need to get back to that? We're not going to gonna sing, by the way. We're not going to yeah, sing. We're not, not going to get into that. Yeah. But to get to a place where you can walk in and know each other's names. And, right. And you don't have to just walk in and say, hey, buddy. Well, you can walk in and say, hey, Frank, the, hey, Steve. Thinking of the old uh, sort of village pubs back in the old country, you know, in, in uh, the U.K. And, um, you know, the notion of everybody stopping at the pub on the way home right. called a publican. And that was the place where people checked in after work, uh, checked in on the news. Uh, probably heard for the first time in the day before all the speed of this internet world that we're in about uh, the big happenings of the day, yeah. sharing about what's happening with their favorite sports team, uh, you know, all of that stuff, right? And creating community, yeah. right? And That's isn't right. That what it's being all about? Community yeah, and being community, making something, creating it, making something different, you know. And and for you and I, Rob, we've we've known each other now for quite a while, for about eleven years, and yeah, we're both happen to be priests, uh, but we're pretty regular guys. Uh, at least I think we're pretty We like to think so. Well, I mean, some people think we're a lot, but I mean, what are you going to do? It can't be perfect. But, uh, but you know, sometimes people have ideas of what the clergy are up to, but uh, most of the time, if Rob and I are together, you can find us perhaps in a place like this, talking about um, the woeful years we've had following the Detroit Lions. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, you that's, know, a whole, that's a whole show right, right? there. Yeah, or, or uh, sharing our lament over the fact that we don't like the Leafs. 
That's right. right. That's true, too. That's right. one thing we have Maybe in common. Have, right? Maybe so, I'm you know, in the wrong podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't fill Ian in. Did, did we? Yeah, Producer yeah, Ian has, has interjected his feelings about the Leafs. Uh, <laughs> so, but, uh, no, it's, you know, I mean, to me, I think uh, it's good for us to have an, uh, uh, an avenue, uh, an opportunity, uh, a media to be able to speak um, in a more... Uh, relaxed way than you know 12 minutes on a Sunday morning or whatever right yeah. and and have a conversation that talks about the sort of things that are going on um, Rob is fairly new uh, here to London I've been here now for about six years but Rob is returning to London because he keeps coming back here like this a bad is the fourth disease. time I've moved he's, back to he's, London he's like a bad disease he keeps coming <laughs> back, coming back. But, but uh but uh, perhaps a little bit about yourself, Rob, your family, your, your, your interest in what you hope to achieve at this new church that you're at. Sure. Um, yeah, so I've been uh, in London now since August of 2018 and uh, just still settling in and finding my way around a little bit. Um, but I am married to uh, Margie, my uh, wonderful wife and partner now for, boy, 24 years almost now. Well, she's a saint. And uh, she is. Well, and, uh, 24 years 24 with you. Years. I mean, come on. <laughs> and I've got two uh, wonderful boys. Uh, my oldest, Brett, who's uh, 22 years old and is at Fanshawe College. And our youngest, Kyle, who's 20 years old, old also a student at Fanshawe College. Yay, Fanshawe. And uh, yeah, so they're doing well there and enjoying that and, uh, and, and planning their futures and working hard and uh, to find themselves and where they want to go. Um, so a wonderful family to surround me and a wonderful parish out in, uh, in South London, as I say, the big blue church on the corner of Wellington and Southdale. And what's great about this parish is that, uh, and i got to give kudos to those that came before me and some of the leadership there over the years, but this is, um, as you know, it's not uncommon for a lot of our churches to get to a point where they feel that they can't sustain themselves and, and they have to make some difficult decisions about what they want to do with their buildings and their community. So yeah. um, a couple of years ago, there were discussions between uh, Holy Trinity Anglican Church and St. Stephen's Memorial about how they can come together and do the ministry that they're called to do. Good cooperation um, and collaboration. Yeah, collaboration and coming together and meeting each other. And, and as I say, forming community in many different ways right. to find out how they want to move forward. And they've got to the point right now where they are one community yep. under one roof and uh, kind of kicking off uh, uh, a new chapter in, in their lives together. Yeah. So I'm just kind of walking in right when they're yeah. beginning. So it's a wonderful opportunity uh, for me to walk with them and to find out where God's calling us in that part of town and in that community and, yeah. and what we're going to look like as a new creation, if you will, right. over the next years to come. Yeah. So I'm looking oh, forward to cool, that. That's cool, man. Yeah. Now, I understand your induction was just a few weeks ago as the rector there, yes. right? Yes. I understand you had an incredible preacher for that. Yeah, this guy from Newfoundland showed up. <laughs> oh, come on, really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and preached a great sermon oh, and yeah. uh, got us all wound up and ready Jeez, to go. What was his name? I think his name was Kevin George. Oh, all right. Yeah, 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 from yeah. St. Aidan's <laughs> Anglican Church. Um, so, no, and I always appreciated that, that you could come and be part of that special night. And uh, Well, the and beauty of it all is, is the third time I've done it. He's been inducted <laughs> in three parishes, church. and, I, yeah, and I've, been, I've, right. I've preached at every one. We're hoping. We're hoping this one's going to take. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's we, right. We, feel, we feel confident about this one. That's right. Yeah. So um, a little bit about myself, I guess. Um, I've been in London now for about six years. It's my return to London. I was here for three years back in the day, uh, in the mid-90s, going to Huron College. Uh, and I am originally from Newfoundland. I'm uh, from a, the beautiful community of White Way and Trinity Bay, just this little tiny spot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, uh, I take great pride in the fact that I'm a Newfoundlander. And uh, I spent 14 years. Uh, well, it's my first year of ministry was up in uh, Labrador. Uh, for the sins of my youth, and, <laughs> and uh, but, uh, it was a long, cold winter, but beautiful people and an incredible oh, yeah. place. And then uh, moved down to uh, Windsor, Essex, and that's where Rob and I met. Actually, that's where we met was down there when Rob came to Essex, uh, um, the town of Essex, and I was in Tecumseh. And I had 14 great years down there with incredible people and an incredible place, and I learned to love the lions, and that that has been dogging me ever that's since. That's right. Yeah, we're sorry about that. Yeah, and uh, and then came uh, back to London here six years ago and became rector of St. Aidan's, and uh, it's been a, an incredible uh, ride and experience. Uh, it's a, an engaged community in a lot of ways. Um, you know, we've just had a, a couple of great weeks with things going on. Uh, Sunday was really cool because we have a beekeeper at the church uh, as we keep bees. And uh, Peter Anderson's our beekeeper, and uh, I was helping him through the week harvest the honey, which was really a cool and sacred experience, you know. Wow. And, yeah. uh, you know, taking the cap off, keeping the wax, because we're going to make some candles for baptisms to give to the families, you know, great. wax made by great. our own bees. Yeah. And uh, we had jars and jars of honey and everybody buying them from... Um, 
uh, Peter's kids on Sunday morning, which was really cool. Still Good jars available for those who want to get them. You just mm-hmm. got to shoot us off an email. But it, it it's uh, I'm, I'm thrilled with the direction of things at uh, St. Aidan's, and I'm pretty excited that Rob is in town because I know the I know the um, the attitude and and the, the care and the ministry that you have and the love for the people that you have, and so I know that. Uh, it's good to to be reunited, so to speak. So yeah, very good. No, yeah. and I'm looking forward to it too. And yeah. uh, and uh, no, I think there's some good things coming. It's not hard to yeah, figure out why you coming. and I would decide to do something like this, like have a podcast and have a natural conversation, which we're used to having. Yeah, in, in but a pub. you got to ask yourself, why would a <laughs> what 17 year old, 18 year old, uh, uh, high school student. Uh, bother to spend time hanging out with two middle-aged balding and i'll say in my case <laughs> large men uh, well i'm a large man rob is not a large man but what what would motivate you uh to agree to do something like this and to come in and, and hang with with fellows like us man that was a fantastic segue wow yeah, well, okay. this is this Holy is ian God. ian stevenson is what we call producer ian hello that's me um so like kevin said um i am a 17 17- yeah sure i'm it's fine um 17 year old high school student going into university slash college next year um where are you gonna go hopefully fanshawe fanshawe college yay that's three that's plugs three. in one that's three in, that's three, three, three in one podcast i wonder how many do we have to have until they start to pay us free tuition <laughs> that's right. we'll get you a sweatshirt don't you worry. we want to monetize um, yeah um but uh i um where was I? Right. Well, you're going Talking to Fanshawe. You're yeah. going to Fanshawe. So, well, hopefully going to Fanshawe. Um, but I'm interested in, in doing something like this just because of the technical aspect. I'm the producer and editor and, and chief sound dude, yeah. I guess you could say. And um, I just I just love the technical aspect and the behind the scenes of uh, whatever's going on. So, yeah, that's why well, I'm here. Well, we're, th- we're glad you're here because if left to us, yeah. there'd just be two guys talking Hopeless. in a room upstairs at well, crossings looking out the window. and We uh, are Luddites. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a, I don't know about Kevin, but Kevin's a pretty cool guy. I think Kevin's a pretty cool guy. I don't oh, know what he thinks about nice me, but that's also why I'm here. Ian's a pretty cool guy, too. And as well, you get to you. know Rob, you'll think he's a pretty cool guy, too. I already think he's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> like, seriously? Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, Ian uh, is not sharing all of his gifts, but he's also an incredible musician. Um, and has composed some of his own music. And so the music you would have heard as you introed into this podcast and as you hear the end of it is music that Ian himself composed. So yeah, yeah. we're thankful for him in many ways. And, and uh, I hope there's more to come. More to come. This man is a, is a brilliant young man. No, so, I saw Ian performing live yep. at a special event at St. Yeah. Aidan's. Yeah. Uh, open for Elvis. Yep, for uh, Open for Elvis that yep. we did at the, you guys did at the end of the summer. And yeah, he was wonderful. He yeah. was wonderful. Yeah. He Thank had, you. He had people cheering, and uh, yeah, and yeah, you got you've got great gifts. So very gifted young That's man. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, and he's singing uh, like great music too, right? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hopefully, um, fingers crossed, before the end of 2019, I'd hope to have an album out, but that's. It's fine. All right. Well, let's keep it under wraps. We don't want to get that <laughs> out. Yeah, send it just on a podcast. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Next thing you know, you'll be signing autographs at everybody's door. <laughs> so now that everybody knows kind of who's here. Yep. Um, the background of everyone. the background of everything and where we are and uh, and who's around. Um, you know, the biggest question we've been asking ourselves, getting ready for this, is what this is going to be all about. Like, yeah. what are we kind of hoping to achieve, and and what do we want to bring to our our podcast? Yeah. So well, and I mean, I think for me, I think one of one of the most interesting aspects of ministry for me over the last 22, three years, whatever it is I've been at this in terms of ordained ministry um, is the amount of times that were called into um, action, if you will, or called into a conversation with what's happening in a public square. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least I hope we are. I think in many ways the church has buried its head at times and has sort of stayed away from any public discourse about the things that are happening. But I think we all know that the church has a voice, or at least we should have a voice. And in many ways in our modern day, uh, since Christendom is dead and the church doesn't hold the power that it used to, we're free to speak more willingly now to to power, uh, which is what the roots of the church were really, the early church. So I think that when we see things happening in the public square that might, you know, cause us to raise our eyebrows because of our values and what we believe um, as a church, then it gives us the opportunity as a, as a people to speak up. And I'd hope as a podcast, we'd have the opportunity to raise some of those critical issues um, and offer our own voices. Uh, and, and really, it is just that, our own voices. We don't pretend to speak for anybody else but ourselves here, but but certainly to have that opportunity to be able to share what we feel. I mean, um, the, uh, the vital report, as it was called, came out this week 
um, and and noted that 70,000 people in this city of you know 380,000 are living in poverty. Right. One in four kids uh, living in poverty. And, uh, you know, for those of us who live by a baptismal covenant, which says that we would uh, strive for the dignity of every human being, then I think it, it, you know, really behooves us to have a conversation about what we're doing about that. Right. I mean, what are we as a church? How are we engaged? How are we as people engaged in trying to do something to eradicate child poverty? Mm -hmm. What are we doing about the fact that uh, the the rate of... um, of uh, uh, vacancies in terms of rentals in this city have, uh, is nearly collapsed. I mean, there's, there's next to nothing left, which means the rate of the, the rent has gone up. Right. Uh, buying houses in this city are, is, is almost out of reach for a lot of people. That was a topic, actually, I was listening to earlier today. The four mayoral candidates were on, I think it was CBC. Yeah. And they've been doing a lot of forums and different media yeah. over the last while, You're welcome, while, CBC. Obviously. You've just been plugged yeah, on just Vickers been Crossing. Plugged. That's right. You People might start listening now. <laughs> um, <laughs> But that was the topic, was affordable housing and, and you know, different politicians' take on, on what to do about that, especially in this city, because I noticed coming in as a newcomer, yeah. um, I, I mean, really noticed story. it. Yeah, and I've got my own personal story that uh, about coming in and, and, and some of the difficulties around finding a house or a yep. place to live. Yep. Um, and in a six-week turnaround, when we had to move from one church to the other. Yeah, uh, in we different didn't, cities. Yeah, in different cities, and, yeah. and the context was different. Um, and, and that's coming from someone that is employed and, yeah. and has some of the benefits around that. But there are many, many yeah. that aren't in that position that need housing and need roofs over their heads. Right. And it's not available here. No. It's not available no, here. it's a tough challenge. Um, and if you've got to decide whether you're paying the rent or the groceries. Right, exactly. And, you know, those days of, of we had these conversations, we were moving. Do you remember the days when you would go into an apartment and just look around and say, to the landlord, yeah, I really like it. I'll take it. And then you were done. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now we're at the day where you walk in and take a look and say, I'd really like it. And the landlord says, well, I've got six or other people that might want to rent it, might want to pay more. Right. Like, you yeah. know, there's there's some um, yeah. some uneven uh, injustice going on around that in a lot of different ways. And, uh, Absolutely. and there's a lot of people being pushed to the side. And so these are the types of things that, that I hope, as you mentioned, um, we'll be able to to chat about and uh, and get input from other people on the outside too. It's not just going to be Kevin and I. No, but our hope is, um, yeah, our hope is that we'll have uh, other people from in and around the community uh, to come in and, and share some of that too. Right, producer Ian, yeah. you have a I question. Actually, I have a question for this. Yeah. Um, since London has two of the most, um, I want to say prestigious, but I don't think that's the right word. Two of the most, um, two of the largest um, post secondary. Um, programs and, and schools um, in the in Ontario or something well, like I that? I would say in the country, really. I mean, Fanshawe is at the leading edge of, of uh, technical colleges, and Western is certainly within the top ten. Fair. I just want to know, like, do you think students would be a, a big part of this? Like, the rising increase of, like, rent and things like that? In part. I mean, I think there's a lot of things going on with that right now. I mean, uh, if we believe what uh, what we're hearing from people who study demographics and so on. There's a part of what's causing this is the uh, expense of Toronto. So a lot of people are moving out of Toronto and they're commuting yeah. to Toronto for work from here uh, or they're shifting their job here. A lot of people homework now. So they can sell their homes in, in Toronto many times for like big money, a million, two million dollars. And they come here and they can buy whatever they want. And this has driven the housing market sort of roof. I mean, if you consider the six year difference between when I came here to this city uh, with Catherine Ann, and when you and Margie came, it was a very different time. Yeah, and it was only we, a five-year difference. Uh, we came here. Six-year difference. We came yeah. here. We were negotiating the price of the house down. Right, right. <laughs> and, and you know, and uh, and the builder was taking an offer based on, okay, well, w- w- you know, uh, well, I'm I'm lo- I'm going to have to give up this little bit and that little bit. You're yeah. coming here, and if you're going to buy a house, you're in a bidding war. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like so. I say, the days of coming in saying, "This is my." budget this is what i have and this is the house we like right um you got to add that extra layer of well 10 other people That's want right. it as well yeah yeah so you know i it's mean it's a different uh, yeah it's a our different uh, our roadie here morgan uh i know uh he because he was he was integral to getting this first broadcast off the ground That's right. podcast That's off right. the ground <laughs> because he had to run all over the place to help us get little technical bits uh but i know when he when he when he was he's a first time home buyer and uh you know he was involved in bidding wars in houses you know where you had to bid tens of thousands of dollars over the price. I right. think where it does producer Ian have a, a, an impact on, on uh, where students have an impact on it is I also believe that there's a lot of foreign investment in this city. So I think some people are buying up homes mm-hmm. uh, and they're becoming uh, massive landlords 
and renting them to the students. Right. And uh, the more they own, the less there's available to people on an individual basis, and right. and it ends up being difficult for the students even right. uh, in terms of, of all of that. And as and as our faith informs us, as Kevin was was mentioning, our role is to and it's important to know why and understand why these things are happening. But at the end of the day, um, we have to recognize that there are people on the fringes and on the outside that are, um, you know, suffering because of this and cannot have roofs over their heads no. for their children. And what, you know, what's our role in, in speaking to that and doing what we can to, to hold that up and make sure that um, their dignity is, is held up and that they can find places to live for themselves and for their family. So that's where the crossroads is, right? That's yeah, I mean, you know, is. what are we going to do about it? Right. Right. Yeah, you it's great. I mean? We talk about it. We love, love all the studies. Yeah. But, you know, boots on the ground, right? And are like, we prepared to talk about it in our church communities? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, for some people, uh, you just coming off of the Thanksgiving season, for some people, the idea of blessing, blessing is being somehow uh, having stuff. You know, I'm very blessed because I have stuff. Right. Where, in fact, the whole notion of blessing or... Uh, or hesed or, or uh, shalom and all those ideas from the Hebrew scriptures is really rooted more in a sense of God's wholeness and, and, and peace and relationship. Right. Um, and so I think that we're really being challenged to speak about these things in our communities. Uh, uh, what that means is that sometimes people are going to be uncomfortable <laughs> because cause it happens to be that I'm one of the people who actually has a lot compared to others. Yeah. And as I said on Sunday, actually talking about this, you know, because we just had... Uh, uh, for those who are uh, churchgoers who go to uh, regular Sunday church, you're going to hear in the lectionary just uh, this past week, um, you know, it's easier for a rich man, easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Right. And that's bad news for most of us. Yeah. If you look at it on a global level where 20 percent of the world uses the resources uh, of uh, uses 80 percent of the resources of the world. Um, and that's, you know, we have some accounting for that. You know, as a people of God, we have to be. We had to be mindful of these things. Right. And, and we share that vision with yeah. God. And we share that vision that Jesus had for this world that he kept referring to as the kingdom of God. That's or, right. Um, where where uh, things are on equal footing. Yeah. And, uh, and again, turning to yesterday, we had some great discussions about that lectionary gospel yesterday uh, from what was preached in the pulpit and what we chatted about afterwards at, um, at coffee hour when we gathered as a community. And this idea that this... Um, and I'm not, I don't want to do the whole sermon again. We don't yeah, have yeah. time for that. But yeah. this uh, man who comes to Jesus and wants to know how to inherit eternal life, and Jesus reminds him not to defraud, mm -hmm. which was on the lines of the, uh, yeah, in the gospel, of, the, yeah. of the gospel and this understanding that um, the only reason he had what he had was because somebody else didn't. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and what does that mean for us? I have what I have. Yeah. Somebody and that, else doesn't, and, and somebody else doesn't, yeah. and that doesn't mean uh, that that we're that we're bad for having. That's not the idea. It's to have this awareness that um, we are connected to each other, and you know when I can start to understand that everything that I've have in my life um, is um, from from other sources, then I can look at that neighbor that doesn't have and say they're worthy of having it too. Yeah, well, and, I mean, the notion is that we, we, we trick ourselves into believing that we were self-made people, right? Right. That we did it all ourselves and nobody right. ever helped, helped us, you yeah. know? And we yeah. hear that in the public discourse, of course, more and more in American-style politics creeping in here. Sure. I even found, like, humorously today, uh, I saw a report on CTV. Um, that's right, CTV. We've now plugged you as well. <laughs> people are going to start watching because you have been on, vi on the Vickers Crossing. Um, but uh, there was a, a report released today that because of global warming, an effect of climate change, uh, the cost of beer is going to go up. <laughs> yes. And this is something that affects me greatly. And I, 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 I know you and I, Rob, uh, will need to enter into a prayerful state and try and figure out how we're going to deal with this. But I tweeted earlier today that I think that this is going to impact the uh, Doug Ford crowd in a very... Uh, uh, confusing way because most of them are uh, climate change deniers, but are also very excited about hashtag buck a beer. Right. Uh, and so now they have, I'm, I think they're at their own crossroads, if you will, uh, about whether or not they want buck a beer or they want to uh, combat climate change. And I mean, the most recent reports we've had about that too is that we're coming up against a very critical time. Oh, yeah. And one of the new promises in the baptismal covenant in the Anglican Church is that we would uh, strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and respect re and renew the face of the earth right. and so when we hear those reports that say you know we're destroying um, the climate 
And when we hear that the ice caps in Greenland are melting at an alarming rate and we're about to raise the water levels, and we hear about uh, Hurricane Michael, which is the most severe thing they've seen in that region in over 50 years, that, that hurricane actually uh, had remnants hit England less than three days after it went passed through the Florida panhandle. Right. So you're talking about storms with intensity and longevity that we've never seen before. So then we must ask ourselves as faith communities, what are we doing? Like, you know, are, are we prepared again to right. talk about that in our churches? Are yeah. we, you know, uh, one of the one of the challenges, uh, you know, just uh, simple things at St. Aidan's, you know, are we are we passing people bottled water, bottled water? Why are we using bottled water when we have perfectly good, clean water coming out of our taps? Why are we right. buying water in bottles? Yeah. You know, what, what are we doing to reduce the, um, um, you know, the, the, the amount of plastics we're pumping into the world? I don't know if you can hear it or not, but what's going by here right now is a train. And the reason it's going by here is because this restaurant, and that's why it's named this, is at a railway crossing. And so we're right at the crossing on Hyde Park of where uh, CP Rail goes by. And so there's a massive freight train going through here well, now. There you go. Yeah. As we're talking about climate change, <laughs> um, you know, there's the opportunity to talk about how do we get things across this country? What do we do? Are we building pipelines all over the place? Or are we, uh, you yeah, know, exactly. Like what, what, and how's happening? that affecting other people? Exactly. I it's, mean, we all want what we're we not want. Dis we're we not disconnected we want, from one we're another. We're connected to each other. And uh, we've yeah. got to be cognizant of, of yeah. what I have. Uh, may mean somebody else doesn't and and uh, you know what does that mean for us so so those are some of the things that we want to to, to get to over the course of the podcast and yeah. and one of the things we want to do as I mentioned was to bring some folks in and chat a little bit more about that I know we've already got a couple of we got a couple of guests up. lined up we have what well, I'm really excited about our first guest and we're going to record that podcast in a little over a week and so it should be available to you in, in about 10 days I'll um, see what I can do we'll get out over to producer Ian. yeah Ian will take care of that and, uh, absolutely <laughs> yeah I got this don't worry <laughs> and, uh, and so um Michael Higgins is a uh, internationally known author um, and lecturer um, who has, he was the official biographer for um, Henry Nouwen. And um, those of you who don't know, Henry Nouwen was a, uh, a priest, um, a psychologist, a professor who taught at Harvard and Yale and gave up all of that and moved into a community called Larsh uh, in Toronto, um, uh, where he lived as a... Uh, as an aid to people with severe uh, mental disabilities. Um, and so Henry Nolan was this guy who walked away from a, wor a world which, where he was very upwardly um, mobile uh, in terms of academics to travel to what he wrote about as downward mobility right. and taking on a more vulnerable role and being present to, to the vulnerable. Michael Higgins, um, a uh, Roman Catholic and a scholar, uh, really is, is so well versed in Henry Nouwen and he's coming to town. Uh, the people at Brescia University College have brought him here along with uh, the parish of St. Aidan's where I am to offer a couple of uh, uh, different lectures at uh, Brescia on uh, Thursday on the uh, 25th. He will be lecturing in the evening um, and uh, it's, a free, uh, it's a free event for anybody who wants to come. Um, and uh, that lecture is going to be specifically about Henry Nouwen and, uh, and about his writings and about how um, the things that Nouwen wrote about uh, can impact the lives of so many. Um, on, the, um, on the weekend, uh, I'm just having a note passed to me by uh, one of my assistants. Uh, my wife, Catherine Ann, <laughs> has uh, walked into the room and uh, is passing along a note which says uh, the event on Thursday night is called Henry Nouwen's Soul Friend and Icon of Wisdom and Compassion. And uh, you can come into Brescia. Parking is available to you. It's at 7.30 p.m. And uh, you will not be disappointed if you come to, uh, to hear Michael. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that very much so. And taking part in the forum that you have over at St. Aidan's afterwards. Right. That. that event will be at yeah. St. James Auditorium at Brescia. And then, as I was saying, he takes up work with us at St. Aidan's on Friday night and Saturday. Where the other thing he's become uh, very... Um, uh, well versed in is uh, is Celtic Christianity and so he has uh, now taken on leadership of an uh, institute in Ireland and so he sends, spends part of his time in Connecticut where he's a chair of sacred theology uh, at, at Sacred Heart um, in Connecticut and then he spends part of the year in um, Ireland where he leads this group on the writings of John Moriarty and, uh, and then he spends part of the year at home in Guelph. <laughs> but, so he's all over the place. Wow. Yeah. But uh, he's a very interesting man, a real raconteur, and uh, he's going to be our first official guest. And so I'd encourage you to... Uh, and if you're interested in that event that we're having at, um, 
at St. Aidan's. It's a very low cost. It's forty dollars because Michael has offered to do this as a as a bit of a favor to us. So we're just paying his cost. Uh, but uh, he's going to be speaking about the writings of John Moriarty and John O'Donohue. And some people might be familiar with O'Donohue because he's written a lot of Celtic prayers and so on. You may not even know you're reading them. Moriarty is a little more obscure, but he's a very interesting guy because he was a scholar, an English scholar, went to Manitoba, took up a tenured position as a professor at the University of Manitoba, got up one morning and said, you know what, this is all crap. I don't want to do this. Yeah. And so he dropped it all, got on a plane, flew back to Ireland, joined a religious community, and became the gardener. And he spent the rest of his life as the gardener. Wow. And while he was doing that, he wrote these incredible, you know, like tomes of just the most incredible stuff. We talk about downward mobility. Downwardly mobile, yeah. buddy. He just yeah. decided he didn't need any of this anymore. And he went and he lived what he wanted to do, which was being a part of a religious community. He wasn't a priest, yeah. but he, he, was, he was there as a person who wanted to do the thing he liked to do, which is put his fingers in the dirt and uh and plant flowers and do the gardening and grow the vegetables and he did all that and he wrote his stuff and so he'll be speaking about that at st aiden's uh on the friday and the saturday and uh come join us there's a lunch included it's 40 bucks uh you can reach out to us at st aiden's uh by just calling our uh, phone number which is 519-471-1430 okay, so we've got him lined up to go good and then our other guests that uh, we're looking forward to chatting with on a, on a local level here in london is uh, outgoing mayor of london matt brown who's um, going to be stepping away from a political life after four years as uh, the mayor of the city and the councillor as, as well. Four years that. previously as councillor yeah, for uh, this very area, actually, right yeah, here we'll, right uh, where we in are. this ward. Yeah. So as we've been talking about, you know, what are the things that are in our community that our, our, our life as a, as a people of faith need to intersect with? He'll have an interesting perspective on that. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure as outgoing mayor, yeah. may be able to, to, yeah. to shed some light um, <laughs> On some other some Might other aspects of that as well. Time. That's right. Yeah. But no. But that's but that's really um, important to hear um, because uh, again, our politicians do talk about these things and they're brought up. Yeah. But there's a lot of things um, going on underneath that, and uh, and uh, we need to figure out how we can intersect that and 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 speak to the politicians and make sure that they hear what we're talking about. That it's not just a a platform to to talk about. Um, you know, to get elected and move forward. But these no, are actually right. Again, boots on the ground, things that need to be taking place in our community. So, Matt, I hope we'll be able to shed a little bit of light on that and share some perspective around some of the, the social justice issues in our community here in London. That's right. Yeah, I know. And, uh, and all uh, uh, kudos to Matt. I think that uh, it's easy to be critical of politicians. Uh, we all do it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I have a great deal of, uh, of respect for people who step into the public eye. They're, none of them are perfect. Uh, they all have feet of clay, uh, and uh, yeah. but uh, I know the love that uh, Matt has for the people of London and uh, why he entered into this. And as I've gotten to know more over my time in London, I've come to have a great deal of uh, respect for what he's tried to do. And uh, I'm really happy for him for the next chapter in his life, and uh, perhaps he can talk more about that when he's with us. But it's, uh, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's really something. And we're just a week away now from an election here. Right. And so one of the things I would say, I guess, on this initial uh, podcast is to say to people, you know what, uh, these, these folks are coming to your door. Uh, they're tweeting you. Uh, they're emailing you. They're doing all that. If you're a person of faith and you care about these issues, uh, whether it's social housing, transit, I mean, uh, BRT is a big deal. And I don't mind saying for me, I believe it's it's a big deal for uh, those, for all of us in the city because it'll help reduce congestion. But I also think it's it's uh, it seems to be that most of us who are talking about it are people who don't ride transit. And the people who need transit yeah. most are the ones who are going to suffer most if we don't do something. And if, if we care about social housing, about the rate of child poverty, and we care about those things, when those candidates, whatever ward they're from, or if they're a candidate for mayor and they come to talk to you, ask them the questions that, are, instru them, that yes. are instructed by your faith. Right. You ask know. them, yeah, what their thoughts are on yeah. that. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's, and that's what being in the public square is about, because we do have opportunity yeah. to take those conversations outside of coffee hour on Sunday at church. Right. And to meet them at the door yeah. when they're knocking on the door. We don't need to be places, right? No. I mean, no, we can exactly. get out. We can be out there doing that. I mean, that, so. you might even find us in a pub. Yeah, you very well maybe. Yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be good. So how, uh, how can people find us here other than well, how they found uh, us in the podcast? Well, good point because I think that uh, we, we don't want to just chat. You know, we have guests who will come on, but we want all of you who are listening to be a part of this conversation as well. We want to we have a crossing with you. We want you to be, who are the listeners, uh, to be able to be engaged with what we're talking about. And so we want your feedback. We want your ideas. We want to hear what 
uh, what you think about what we're sharing or what we need to share. And uh, you can do that by reaching out to us. Our uh, email address is vickerscrossing at gmail.com. And that's V-I-C-A-R-C-R-O-S-S-I-N-G at gmail.com. And that will also be up on the podcast. You'll see that. You can tweet us at Vickers Crossing. And you'll find us also on Facebook, the Vickers Crossing. And, um, and you'll see that as well. Um, eventually, you're going to find a podcast on, you will have found this one because either myself or Rob or somebody else will have sent you the link probably. But uh, in the next couple of days, uh, what we've recorded today will find itself on YouTube and SoundCloud. Eventually, you'll find it on YouTube, YouTube, uh, not YouTube, pardon me. iTunes. iTunes, and you'll be able to subscribe. But that won't happen until producer Ian is able to do a little more research. Right, right. producer yeah. Ian? What do you, how do you feel, to do. How do you feel about that, producer Ian? I got a lot of reading to do. <laughs> <laughs> more homework, homework for, the, for, oh, for yeah. the high school yeah, student. That's what uh, he great. needs is another yeah, book, that's right? right. That's so great. so uh, email us, tweet us, Facebook us, um, and do whatever it is you need to do. Send out a homing pigeon if you like, uh, smoke screen, whatever, works, whatever but, works. But but you can get a hold of us. Rob and I are interested in your ideas. Uh, we're very grateful to, uh, to producer Ian and uh, grateful today for the help of... Uh, Morgan uh, Sherlock, who's our uh, youth and children minister at uh, St. Aidan's, who's been all over the place, and to my uh, smoking hot wife, Catherine Ann, who came in at the last minute and passed along notes to keep me straight. It's good to so have a gallery. It's always <laughs> good to have a gallery. That's we have right. a bit of a live guest uh, here, which is, right. which is always good. If that's it's up good. on YouTube, there'll be a link in the description to um, the Twitter, the, the Facebook, the Gmail, and all that. Um, if it's up on SoundCloud, it'll be in the description, but I don't know where that is on the SoundCloud website, but... It'll be easier to uh, easy to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna iron out all those wrinkles. Absolutely. We'll yeah. All right. So yeah. our thanks to uh, producer Ian, to Rody Morgan, to Catherine Ann, to the good fine folks here at Crossings, and Stephen, who's so generously been uh, helping us kind of set things up and get things going here. Yeah, at Crossings we're gonna get on Stephen. We're gonna get Stephen in here to chat a bit too. Yeah. He's got some uh, stories to tell. I know an interesting yeah. background. So, so that'll be great as well. We'll look forward to. Uh, getting together the next time we we gather absolutely and yeah. so and until then remember always look both ways before you cross the street thank you for listening our hosts are kevin george and rob henderson our producer and composer is myself ian with original artwork done by katherine olenek we would like to thank morgan sherlock for all his help if you have any questions or want to know how to find us tweet us at vickers crossing or find us on facebook at the vickers crossing if you have any other questions about anything heard on this podcast, feel free to look in the description to find out more. Stay tuned for our next podcast when we welcome internationally acclaimed author Michael Higgins.